Okay, so personal growth is our next topic. And we actually have uh, a very special guest today to speak about this topic. Our next speaker started his entrepreneurial career in his teens, and with one business adventure after another, he made it through school, earning money from one crazy idea to the next. The dreams and visions were there, but not the plans and not the know-how to succeed. Today, he is a successful leader of a multiple income streams to sustain the life that he leads. However, it's not all about the money. It is about something more precious that he really values. And it is freedom. It is the freedom to live the life he chooses with the people he loves. We can call him a coach, we can call him a business leader, and he is a true genius in helping other people to reprogram their beliefs into the culture of personal growth and success. More than that, he is not a foreigner to Oriflame. He is our own leader, the Oriflame leader, he and his network joined our business last year, and within the first eight months, he made the sales worth of 1.2 million pounds. So today, especially from the UK, <laughs> our biggest UK leader, welcome on stage, Greg White. Thank you guys, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I have two major challenges for me personally. One, not to fall on top of you guys. And uh, secondly, to talk within 18 minutes, of which that says 16, so I've got two minutes over that. <laughs> Just so we're very, very clear. Um, it's an honor to be invited, to be honest with you. It's not really something that I expected. Um, and I think it's been a really quality day. I mean, I've just been stood at the back, I'm quite active, I like to stand, I think sometimes sitting down just, you know, sometimes the seats suck the energy out of you. <laughs> so, um, I've just been admiring and listening to all the speakers of the day and I just think it's been fantastic. I think the message has really come to what I think is fundamentally important and that's personal growth and it's something that I'm really passionate about. So when I was asked to speak, I'm like, 18 minutes? I could probably talk for three hours and more. Um, so yeah, um, I'm feeling like as well, I'm kind of living a little bit of a, a boyhood dream at the moment. This like microphone makes me feel like I'm a pilot. <laughs> so I've never worn like anything, I feel like Tom Cruise in Top Gun, I'm just missing the helmet. And just fascinating really, and, and on that note, um, I'm not sure about you, but I had quite a few dreams when I was a child, and I think sometimes our dream, the dreams we have as children fade away through social and environmental conditioning. Does that make sense? I mean, every, every one of us here, that this is the challenge. I haven't even started my slides and I'm gonna talk for 20 minutes. The, 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 every one of us here lives our lives in line with our own personal beliefs. And everyone's beliefs are different. It's having a refined appreciation for the all and, and respecting each other, would you agree? To kind of come together as one. But we all have our own beliefs. What's fascinating is then beliefs were put into our mind by our environment by what we consume. And that's really what I want to talk about because actually, you know, um, a few people have said something to me today about, you know, the, like the Swedish culture sometime, and obviously I'm very new, I've only been here twice, and they've both been flying visits. I'm being dragged off this evening, I can't party with you. So at the end of my talk, we're gonna do a little dancing session just to satisfy my own personal needs. <laughs> uh, but Sophia's dragging me back to the UK, literally kicking and screaming uh, to finish our catalog tomorrow. What was I talking about? <laughs> this happens all the time. So yeah, so our, our, our beliefs, personal growth, lost the plot. Um, and um, really kind of like our social environmental conditioning, but the, the dreams we have as children fade away because of that environment. And I think what I've been told a few, too few occasions today is that sometimes it's maybe the Swedish culture to be fearful of change and you know, we all need to be similar in a way. Now I'm not sure if that's right, it's just what a couple of people have said to me today. But actually I think that's right globally. 
because we have this, this internal need to fit in. Does that make sense? As individuals, our natural state is to mirror other people to fit into that environment. Did you know, and, and um, Elizabeth that was just talking, did you know that actually when you spend a lifetime with somebody else, um, like as couples, actually what happens, because you're talking and smiling at each other, by naturally mirroring each other, you strengthen the same facial muscles. So actually, just have a look at your partner and just make a decision if you want to look like them in 50 years. <laughs> true, true story. Um, but I think change is inevitable, and this is something that's really, really important to me, and, and, I, and I value it. How we change is how we succeed. And it was touched on today by um, Charlie that was speaking about doing the same thing and expecting different results is a sign of madness. But we've all got this inner potential. It's in your DNA to learn, develop and grow. It's built into our DNA. It's evolution. It's life. Yet actually our environment can restrict us, our own beliefs can restrict us, or sometimes our own confidence. Would you agree? But actually the only way to develop confidence is to do the thing. I don't know if you've ever heard, do the thing and gain the power. And that's really, really important. But all of us have this comfort zone, and, th and this is what's really, I haven't even got to my slides, this is like <laughs> six minutes in or four minutes in. All of us have our own personal comfort zone, but here, here's what's interesting. Everything that has value to every single person here today, including myself, everything that has value in our life, and that could be a partner, it could be uh, a job, a position, it could be trialling something new. Everything of value, at one point in time, was outside of your comfort zone. You know, asking for that first date, making that phone call, asking for the pay rise, you know, putting your arms up for 10 minutes before, it's like a power move, right? <laughs> Thinking you're like a superhero or, or like a Top Gun movie star. Um, but I think that that's really essential is, is a floss the plot talking about Top Gun. Again, I'm in my own little brain, I'm flying around the world. Um, but I think it's important to know that you've got it within you to step out of your comfort zone. And it's only one little step, and that's how we grow. And one of the things I've learned, for me, personal growth is a journey of self-discovery. And I, I think they're going to show my circle at the end. And I'm, I think sometimes we're our own biggest critic, would you agree? Yeah. So I'm quite tough on myself, but I also know that the further we climb, the further we see. So, you know, you can grade yourself at a 10, but is it true that we'd actually ever get to a 10? Because we're always expanding our own potential. Like, I don't know about you guys, but after the first lady spoke this morning, I've been like David Beckham when I've been going to the toilet, scoring goals in the, like, the <laughs> visualisation. I've literally scored three goals today just by like, visualising when I'm going to the toilet. I don't even know why I told you that, I'm really sorry. <laughs> Anyway, uh, should we move on? So I think it's a, it's a, it's a journey, uh, I'm really sorry about that, it's a journey of, of, of self-discovery. And I think the more, the more we learn, the more we grow, the, the further we climb, the, the further we see. And, you know, I'm by far the finished article and I probably never will be. You know, I think it's like, you know, people skills, you know, it takes a, you can read a book in an hour, but it takes a lifetime to master. And, you know, I think it's a philosophy, isn't it? When you spend 10,000 hours doing something, you can become a master of that, whatever that may be. But here's the thing. Will you ever become a true master of anything? And I think this, um, I think you can, incidentally, but I think sometimes we try and focus on too many things. And the, I'll probably talk about the circle, if I ever get time to, um, at the end, because actually I think it's okay to be out of balance. I think sometimes we have too much social environmental condition that we need to be a rounded figure. But actually, if it makes your heart sing to be out of balance, then be out of balance. Because how we feel is what we project. Would you agree? When you feel good, you flow. Has anyone ever felt like they're just flowing because everything feels good? Yeah. Well, that's it. What you've got to do is learn to put yourself into a state of feeling good, which is the challenge because of the environmental conditioning. Let's move on, Craig, because we're waffling. So, um, for me, your passion to succeed is absolutely everything, whether that's passionate about a relationship. If you're passionate about your partner, you, you will be a great partner. If you're passionate about being a father or a mother, you will be a great parent. I've got two little girls. My, um, they're my reason why. Funny, when I was younger, um, I'm only 42, I just bathe in the age every, every week, I have like a, a, a two hour bath. Um, but my, my, my eldest, Isabella's literally just set up her own little online business. Like I was 12, 13 when I started my own little bookies at school, making like 60 quid a week, which is really cool. And she's just, she's just inspired because of the environment. 
but she's passionate about drawing, she's passionate about positivity, so when you marry them, the two together, you can do something you love doing. Does that make sense? Um, I mean, I've only been in, in Our Flame just over a year, but one of the things that sits well with me is everyone that I've met, whether it be in the network or in the corporate staff, has this, this passion and this value for what they're doing. And you know, like the, obviously the values in teaching you what you already know, together in a spirit and passion, that sits really well and in line with me, so it's almost kind of like, I don't know, not, I'm not very, not religious, but like a match made in heaven. Anyway, should we move on, because I'm waffling again. Right, so, this is really, really important. When you're passionate at something, about something, you can become excellent at it. That's what I really, really believe. And so it's really, if you're passionate about your job, you can become an excellent, uh, excellent at it. And it's about having value. Like Isabella, she was, this is my eldest little girl, she was um, getting excited about the, the profit that she could make, which is really, really cool, because I was trying to inspire her to take us to Thailand. And um, she, um, but actually what I did is I stopped her, I saw the focus on money, and I said, actually, you need to look at this from a different perspective. Just imagine all the people that are gonna have your inspirational illustrations on their wall looking at them. You're having a positive impact on people's lives every day. That is more important than the immediate financial reward. Does that make sense? And it's like what we do, you know, somebody said about getting a pay rise. If your value is worth a pay rise, then we'll, we'll get one, right? So, for me, the challenge is, and I've touched on this, we live in a, a microwave society where we expect immediate and instant gratification. Quick example, we watch a two hour movie that's like a lifetime where somebody gets born, they have a great life and they die. And we expect that same kind of instant gratification in our life, that we're gonna get all of the results that somebody had in a two hour movie. Because these things are really influential. Has anyone ever watched the movie Forrest Gump? Yes. Has anyone ever heard that when he talks and he says, life is like a box of chocolates, you never know what you're gonna get? What a load of rubbish. <laughs> What a load of rubbish. Every box of chocolates I've ever brought has got a little menu card in it telling me what's on it. <laughs> and I bet every lady in here that loves chocolate knows exactly which one they're picking first before they've even opened the box. <laughs> so you know exactly what you're going to get. But this is how we are conditioned. So sometimes you've got to get emotionally congruent with, with what really truly matters with you. So um, I do believe we are exactly what we consume. And this is the interesting thing, you're either expanding, in my opinion, you know, if anyone went to university, I'm not educated from a university perspective, I've learned through failing to succeed or reading and developing my mind, but I think you're either growing or you're attracting. And actually, nature's built on that, the way you breathe, the heart expands, it retracts. I could go into details on this for two hours, right? But actually, you know, that's really, you know, we live in a world of, of Mother Nature. So what we consume, we become. We all know if we ate at McDonald's for 30 days, we're not going to become very fit and healthy, are we? So, but it's the same with our mind. And what's going into our mind? What are you consuming to shift the way you think, to believe in your own possibilities that lie within you, around you, and before you? So how we think is ultimately how we feel. And, and, and this is something, so a common saying, right? This is in the UK. If you ask somebody how they are, they'll go, oh, I'm not too bad. <laughs> What's not too bad anyway? Half dead, half alive? <laughs> like, if you ask my little girls, how are you? They'll be like, fantastic. Because they're cultivated within an environment of positivity. Now, how does not too bad make you feel when you say it? How does fantastic make you feel when you say it? There's, a, there's an energy that the words we use affect the way we feel. Sometimes, like someone said to me in my network, oh, positivity doesn't fix everything, Craig. I said, well, it will start for you. <laughs> okay? It's a really important thing. I hope she doesn't listen to this. It wasn't a she, it was a he. But anyway, so, um, the missing link, look, again, the, 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 the foundation of today is it, is it starts with you. When that song was launched um, this year, like literally the hairs on my arms stood up. I absolutely love it. I, I have it on social media all the time. You know, we have it at the beginning of, of every event because I just think everything starts with us. And, and here's an interesting thing. We talk about leadership. We all have a leadership responsibility of our own life. And I learned this quote from somewhere. A leader of one is a leader of many. If you're only, uh, unable to lead one, you'll never lead any. So it's about how you show up for your relationships, how you show up for personal growth, how you show up in employment, how you show up tonight to party. This is the problem why Sophia doesn't want me to go out tonight, because she knows I will show up with an all-in mentality, and I'll, I'll still be going at four o'clock, right? Um, but 
you must get congruent with your values. Now, a quick story. I've got to speed up a little bit because I've got three point for three seven minutes. Um, this is the biggest thing. Most people set their goals, dreams, and ambitions, even if they set any at all. If you never, if you don't know where you're going, here's the fascinating thing: you're never going to get there. So I was just looking at an Instagram post a moment ago um, in the break by one of the Russian leaders that I connected with when we were in Australia. And he's got a picture of loads of the team all sat on the floor developing what we call goal boards. Now I don't know if any of you have ever come across the secret or the law of attraction, but actually your mind is developed to create solutions to what you unconsciously see. So if you're seeing your goals all the time, unconsciously you're making decisions to kind of take yourself towards them. I'm kind of waffling a little bit. but. What's we talking about? Um, you must be congruent. So here's the thing, right? So I, I when I was, when I first got involved in um, the the industry, I had this desire to drive a black Porsche. It'd been my goalhood dream. It was a, a dream me and a friend had, and he he lost his life when when I was 23, and it made me realise I didn't have a crystal ball. So I started working towards the things that we wanted, and sometimes from great loss comes a great strength. Um, eventually, when we're ready to see it. And I started working, actually I used to visualise driving a Porsche when I was driving a clapped out Volkswagen Sirocco with my eyes closed and then I used to open and you really shouldn't close your eyes when you're driving, right? Um, but actually that was my motivating factor, then I got my girls and obviously everything changes when you become a dad, they're literally my soul. And, and being the best father I can be is probably the most important thing to me. But I had this, I had this goal and dream of driving a, a Ferrari, I love cars, a 458 Italia in bright red. Does anyone know how many seats are in a 458 Italian? <laughs> two. There's me and my two little girls. That makes three. There's no congruency with my values of being a great father and going on adventures with them and working hard for a Ferrari. So the Ferrari was, ne the Ferrari was never coming into my world because I wasn't working for it because it wasn't congruent with my personal emotional values. So sometimes we set goals and dreams because other people do or because our environment do but you have to step back and actually set things that truly matter to you but if it doesn't make your heart sing if it isn't like emotionally connected to what's really important so here's a, here's a quick story on, on um, I think it might even be on the next slide so we don't have to worry about that one but getting emotionally connected imagine if we went to like the highest building in, in Stockholm and I put a rickety old wooden ladder from one side of that, from that building to another building at equal heights. And I offered you 20 euros to walk across it. It's 100 stories up. Who would walk across the 20 euros? No one, unless you're, you're crazy, right? <laughs> if you have a child or a loved one, imagine that your child was on the other building and it was on fire. How quickly would you be across that ladder? It's emotional motivation. Emotional motivation will empower you to do the things that other people will not do. So wherever you want to be, professionally, in relationship, relationships, in, in fitness, it's about what really emotionally matters to you. I think everybody probably wants to be fit, but actually, does it really matter to you or is it society saying you need to be fit? Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's just getting congruent. Um, and this um, self-discovery time with yourself, I'm, I'm a people person, I love being around people, but actually I went away, um, I'm not sure when it was now, maybe, oh yeah, I've got absolutely no idea, a while ago, <laughs> Isabella was about three, and I decided that I just needed to get out of the country because things were going great, but I just didn't feel happy. So I literally, I was looking um, online for, a, I wanted to learn Reiki and, and I thought yoga sounded like a really cool thing to learn. So I found this French lady in Thailand, right on this tiny little island away from all the commercial rubbish of, of Thailand, right? And I flew out there and I got to the airport and I thought, what are you doing? You're going away by yourself, are you crazy? What are you going to do for a week? Do you know what? It was the most audacious week I've ever had in my life. Here's the thing, we do more for others than we do for ourselves. Going on that trip made me realise, because I had no one else to worry about, had no one else to ask, how are you today, where do you want to eat today, where do you want to go, I literally took care of myself. It was probably the most fulfilling week of my life, because I got to connect with who I was, I got to discover a little bit about me, and in our fast-paced society, every one of us avoids giving ourselves that bit of time every week, and on the back of that, I used to... Um, go for a walk, I still do this, but in a different place, there was a, a bench under a big oak tree that looked over some beautiful fields. I used to walk to that, about a 20 minute walk from my house, sit on it, 
contemplate life for as long as I could take that without anybody else to talk to. I then walked back, but it was nice, you know, just getting a bit of time for yourself, a bit of big peace and quiet. I've since been to Australia for four days to go surfing on my birthday. Everyone thought I was mad. The, the customs when I flew back into the UK thought I was a drug mule because I'd only been to Australia for four days. So they're stopping me and they're like, you don't seem very happy. And I said, well, I'm not really happy. I'd rather be down the M1, like drinking coffee and eating a bacon sandwich by now. Um, so anyway, time with yourself is really, really important. You've got to get that emotional motivation. And, and, and here's the thing about becoming attractive. And I think um, sometimes we focus too much on what we want. So I read a book um, called The Compound Effect, and um, uh, this guy was talking about relationships and how you know he, he'd been looking for his dream partner, and but was never really was going through like relationship after relationship, and actually took a step back and realised he was focusing on what he wanted, not who he had to become to attract that dream partner. So personal growth is about who we become. Personal growth is about what we contribute into the world. I've still got one minute, 30 seconds, if that's okay. Um, so look at your, you could look at your professional role. How do you need to show up? What do you need to contribute to be attractive? What do you, if, you, if you're looking for a partner, you know, what do you, how do you need to show up? Am I making sense? Yeah. Is everyone bored of me yet? No. That's really cool then, okay. <laughs> so focus on growth and positivity. I, I want to leave you with, with, a, with a challenge. And um, for me, happiness is the fuel for everything because it projects our posture. How we feel is what we project into the world. Would you agree? When you're happy, you're vibrant. Somebody talked about clothing earlier. Has anyone ever left their house wearing something they felt uncomfortable in? Right? Whenever you have that feeling, turn around, get back in the house because you need to get changed because if you go out feeling uncomfortable all day, it's how you're gonna project all day, right? So how you feel is really important to how you live and what you project and what you create in your own leadership role. So I have a, a little challenge for you and I think this is really, really important. It's about being grateful for what we have in our life. Somebody talked about waking up. I wake up in the morning happy that I'm breathing, okay? And I think it's about having a gratitude. And if you, if you can have more gratitude for what you have, actually you become a more, more attractive to maybe the journey of personal growth but also acquiring maybe some of the things you want to share, feel, do, achieve, etc. So my challenge to you all is to rewire your brain to be even more happier than you already are by literally each day, make a note, you can do it in a journal, you can do it on social media, but each day for 21 days, think of three things that you're grateful for. Grateful for your friendships, grateful for your job, grateful for a shirt on your back, okay? Um, and if you can do that for 21 days, maybe you can hashtag uh, social media gratitude. It starts with you and, and Oriflame for a bit of collective togetherness uh, where you can hold each other accountable and you can say, hang on, you've not done your three things today. Um, but that's what a team does, right? Collectively hold each other accountable and come together to make a bigger difference for one and all. So thank you very much um, for your time. Is it uh, Tatsu Mike? Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. But I would like to actually show Greg's will to you. <coughs> yeah, and do you have the same question as I have? <laughs> Why are you so modest? I think, um, like I mentioned earlier, I think you're always growing, and I think I'm on a new journey. I started a new journey a year ago, and I think we've always got, we're always learning, right? So I think the further you climb, the further you see. Um, and, I, and, and I'll be really honest, if you look at this, uh, this is just my, my take on it, right? If you look at this circle, your mind will automatically override to create a rounded circle, right? It, it will naturally do it. You thought, well, I can't give myself a four, I better give myself a six. Unconsciously, that will happen, I promise you. So when I did this, I actually didn't have the circle in mind, I just had the questions. So it was more true and congruent to actually what's my truth. Um, yeah, I, I, and again, I think getting out of balance, like, I, I'm passionate about what I do, I, I love who I work with, I will work from the moment I open my eyes to the, the moment I fall asleep, if it's contributing to make a difference in my, in, within my team, because I feel obligated to help and support people achieve their goals, dreams and ambitions, but it's an obligation that I love, 
it fulfills what matters to me. Does that make sense? As long as I've got time with my two little girls, life's good. Thank you. Do you have any questions to pray? This is the scary bit, right? Question. <laughs> When I ask my little girl questions, she goes, I don't know. I thought it was very interesting to talk a bit about your kids a lot, uh, your daughters. You talked about Isabella many times. What's the name of your second daughter? Alana. Alana. She is the troublemaker. And <laughs> she will get through life on pure charisma. And she's got this beautiful little antagonistic personality. She just loves to have fun and wind people up. It, and Isabella, you know the lady was talking about folding the clothes? Isabella's like the geek of the household, right? And, and then me and Lana are just like disruptive. Um, so it's quite fun. <laughs> Any more questions? Everyone wants to party, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're so thinking, jealous. Do oh, you have a question there, yeah? So Craig, it was good that we did the waffling anyway, much better than the than doing the slides. But um, a quick question: We've been with Oriflame for a year now. So how's that? How's Oriflame added value to your sort of personal growth? I think it's uh, it's, uh, it's a, a journey. And again, you know, I mentioned from great loss, you had great strength. So I, I had I was had a, another business for about uh, 17 years that was you know massively successful. And in hindsight, I kind of wish it had gone five plus years ago because I've kind of fallen in love with the the Oriflame way. And I'll be really honest, when, when we came over to Oriflame, I actually didn't know where it sat for me as a guy, be really truthfully honest. But it was the right decision for the people that I care about, which was my extended family, because I knew that they could get involved. It's a great company with great ethos, great values. And for me, I'm just learning all the time. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just great to be a, a part of something that, I, for me, is, it has a truth in its integrity and, and its commitment to people. And I, I love that, because I think that's what life's all about. Um, if that answers your question. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Because, you know, it's not always we um, have a leader on stage who speaks English, you know, and we can ask anything. Uh, 100 miles an hour, right? Exactly. So my, my question is, uh, you know, we always hear how difficult it is to recruit people, how often you get a no. Uh, I think that uh, for us, it's probably difficult to relate uh, uh, to the amount of no's you can get while you know recruiting in direct sales. At the same time, we do face no's in our everyday life. You know, it's uh, quite often you want to do something and there is a negative answer. How do you talk to your people and how do you deal with uh, the no? Do you have some sort of you know advice to us? Um, I think from a, a perspective of you know, in, in all walks of life, you know, people from a success perspective, people think that, you know, it's a straight line from A to B. And then when people start failing, they go, oh, it's all going wrong, let me turn around, success must be in the, the opposite direction. But actually, everything's just building our character from a strength point of view. So for me, taking the nose makes me a better person. So when I stumble across somebody good, I'm good enough to take care of them. So we, we all have like this inbuilt, kind of buy-in technique. So like somebody might feel uncomfortable spending 50 quid on a pair of shoes where somebody else might be comfortable spending 500 quid. So everyone's mindset is very different. So sometimes, I don't even know what relevance that's got. But it's, um, <laughs> it, you know, it's, you've just got to go for no. And I think it's common knowledge that people will say no five times typically before they say yes. And you know, for whatever reason, they're maybe just not vibing or the timing's not right. Um, for me, Recruitment's easy um, in the poise that I'm not worried about doing the work. It's like, you know, I think it's that instant gratification. You know, people want to have a six pack and they want to have that dream summer body. You've got to go to work to get that, right? It's not going to happen if you're eating McDonald's and not working out or not running and, or whatever it is. So, again, it's about having that congruency because if you're passionate about something, you can take the nose as if it's just a breeze, really, because nothing really kind of derails you from what you're focused on. Thank you. And I have a connected question. Um, we all know that to be a successful leader, you need to have a core team, yes? Mm -hmm. And for you, it's important to have people who grow uh, in your structure and who attract other people as well. And then when you recruit, you speak about passion. Mm -hmm. And you speak about passion a lot in all your speeches, yes? And it's your approach. But how do you recognize this passion in people when you first meet them? Do you know at first sight that this person is the one? Has anyone ever seen somebody before in life and you've met someone for the first time and they've got a sparkle in their eye and it just resonates with you? Sometimes it's that. 
you just get a vibe from people. This is what I mean, how you project yourself when you're happy, you will flow, everything great comes to you. So I think it's, you know, people join the business for different reasons. Some people that typically, I mean, I stumbled into the industry, you know, just for like a little bit of extra cash and then I went traveling and then I'm like, oh, I don't really want a job again. Wonder if I can make a couple of grand. And then I'm like, you got, you earn a couple of grand and you're like, well, they're earning seven. So I can earn two arms, two legs philosophy. So you, yeah. Um, what was the question again? <laughs> how, do, how do you recognize the passion in that? Yeah, so I think, you know, I think you, you feel it and, and, and sometimes, sometimes people have never, I think everyone's got a passion inside them, but it's been, you know, undervalued or, or underappreciated. And sometimes just, a, you know, if someone says no to me, I'll quite happily just leave them. Do you know what? I wish you all the best because whoever you end up working for is going to be lucky to have you on the team. Because how many times have, uh, are people ever told, thank you, or that you look great, or and it's very, you know, for me, like, if I keep telling all the ladies they've got a great smile, they think like I'm chatting them up, but actually, if I say you've got a great smile, I mean it, right? Because it's authentic. So I think, but sometimes we don't pass compliments enough, or people don't receive them enough. So a gesture of goodwill is actually very calming, because actually somebody talked about oxytocin. A gesture of goodwill, as simple as politely holding the door open for somebody, releases oxytocin here. It makes you feel good. <coughs> so um, I'm waffling again. <laughs> we got it, we got it. Uh, any more questions for Craig? We ready to do a little dance then? Yeah, I see the stop there, but actually, you know, before we do the dance, <laughs> now you one. have you have the whole uh, group support office uh, gathered here. So this is the conceptual brain of Oriflame. You are a successful businessman. You are our partner. So, do you have any wishes or you know messages to us? What's important for you that we never forget? What would you like to get from us so that you can successfully build your business further? It's a really tough question, isn't it? Really, <laughs> <laughs> like throw things at me, maybe. No, do you know what? I think what what you're doing is phenomenal. I think that the kind of everything's about evolution, how we're moving with trends, and you know I'm really happy with what we have. To be really honest with you, like I'm blown away by it. Like. Like I did a live the, today, and I think you, you you get this emotion when things feel good. Does that make sense? So I'm happy where we are. I'm happy with what you guys provide us. Yes, we always need to be learning, growing, moving with the trends. Um, for me, like a, we're a global business, but I'd love a global opportunity. It's a difference, right? Um, but aside from that, I think everything's you know fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Yeah.